when I think fiery leader, I think of our good friend Jimmy Patsos. Coach, how you doing? I, I, you're out beating the streets, huh? Beating the streets. We, it's funny, Jordan Watson and I had to do some recruiting and go out, you know, it never stops. And uh, I'm calling you from lovely Hall of... We stopped in. We were on the way. We just happened to drive by Cooperstown. So for some inspiration, we dropped in the Hall of Fame. That's very cool. Coach, i got to ask the question, how do you write the ship? Um, you know, play defense. I mean, look, we played twice to overtime. Bucknell coming off that game. Bucknell played great. I mean, they're really good. But we can't just put guys at the line 20 times. But it's, 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 it's about effort and listening on defense. Look, I've always been an offensive coach, but you got to take some pride defensively. And reaching and fouling, while I understand you're angry because you're down 18 or 20, is not the answer to keep fouling guys. But we're learning. I told everyone this is going to be a learning process. And... Some guys are really doing well in their roles, and some guys are doing much better than they, their statistics appear. And a couple guys have to grow up very quickly, grow up and decide whether it's sharing the ball, whether it's your job to rebound, or whether it's your job to take a charge and play defense. Everyone has to buy into what their role is, and that's, what's, that's what a problem with a young team is because we, we have to define some roles, and you have to say, Yes, you're right, Coach. I am a defender and a rebounder. Yes, Coach, I am a facilitator and a passer. And yes, Coach, I am a scorer, but if I'm covered, I have to pass it to the guy wide open. And you don't learn those things until you go through adversity and losing, et cetera. And the results aren't there. The 0-4 is 0-4. I don't care who we played. I didn't think we'd be 0-4. I didn't think we'd be 4-0. But young people today, it's show them, be grateful, have a great Thanksgiving. We're getting together Thursday night. And here are the results of an exhibition game and four games. You're either going to change and adapt to your role or we're going to play different guys or we're going to recruit different guys because it's not really working, especially on the defensive end. Everyone has to take responsibility. Coach, I can hear that you're not you're not even close to pushing the panic button. But this is a this is a coachable, fixable thing. As a fan, oh, no, no, I'm not not at all. I'm glad you said that. Think we're positive, we're happy. Now, I, I I can't at the end of the game walk in when we play like that and lose to Bucknell, a team we beat three games in a row, and say, if you guys don't want me to be angry, then we really have an issue. If you guys don't want to be coached and point out discrepancies of rebounding, free throws, assists, and turnovers. At some point after four games, I'm not gonna, I came in the locker room afterwards not screaming, not yelling, not throwing anything. Those days are over anyways. But I raised my voice and said, if having more turnovers and assists every game is okay with you guys, then we have a flawed view of what our expectations are. Am I allowed to say that? Yes. Can I say no. that? Yes. Yeah, that's okay. You can, so, coach, you can say whatever so you want. Words, if we have more assists than turnovers and we lose, or we lose by an overtime twice, I get that. But the two blowouts, but let's put it down, fellas. We have more turnovers than assists every game. How is that going to be beneficial to any basketball team, whether it's eighth grade, high school, prep school, college, Division One, NBA? You all know the answer. We have to have more assists than turnovers. We have to get a few key stops. And when you're down six, you can't turn it over, not run back, give up a three, take a bad shot. This is not any one person. I'm making sure that's clear. But if that's all okay with you guys, then we'll just sit there and roll through the year. We won't win a game. And, 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 and most of the people in the team responded very, very, very accordingly. And, no, we're upset. This has to change. We have to figure some things out. And then I said, hug your grandmothers, hug your families, be grateful to all those around you, and have a good Thanksgiving. And we'll see you Thursday night. And that Thursday night, and plus Saturday, you got your matchup against Hofstra. What would a victory mean to get these guys playing some defense Hofstra's and feeling good? Hofstra's really tough. Yeah. You got a former player of Kenny Warmly, a guy that we really like, like and respect. But now he's on the, you know, he's on the other team. So as Coach Parcells would say, he's now the enemy. <laughs> um, but we like Kenny, and I know Joe Mahalik, and they score a lot of points, and they got a very good team, and they have a senior leading scorer, and they got Rokas inside, who's a beast. He's a six eight, really good player inside. We have to as a team, try to defend him. But we have to follow the defensive game plan, and that's going to be as a coach. But I have to say, fellas, you've listened to games, and we lost in overtime. I know you're upset. But we really listened, and we were really close, and it wasn't perfect. We're making progress. Two games you have just gone, whether it's shot selection, whether it's not following the defensive game plan, whether it's being down 10 and saying, hey, let's get two stops in a row and we give up two wide jump shots. 
that's not okay. I'm not going to accept that. There will be changes made throughout the season with a young team. But listening, learning, loving, trying to get the win, giving it all, I'm down with all that stuff. But I'm not going to sit there and not have that stuff be followed and then say I'm okay too. I don't think – I think we're all past that, aren't we, fellas? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I'd say so. Coach, what are, you, uh, what are the plans I'm for Thanksgiving? 2 p.m. Saturday. On Thanksgiving, going to see my brother and his son. Nice. But this is a 24-hour trip. Like I said, we're out on the road today. Coach Watson and I can't comment on recruiting. And sometimes you just got to get inspiration and pull the car over and say, hey, let's go, you know, check out the Hall of Fame baseball area and see what's going on there because I'm always going to try to get inspiration from different places. And I found something today that said about it's okay to make mistakes. We respect mistakes. We understand the mistakes are going to be made. But we also have to correct those mistakes. And we have to, it's our job to correct them, and it's the player's job to correct them. Come out Saturday at 2 p.m. I hope they're corrected. If they're not, then we'll have to make some adjustments. I don't want to make adjustments and alterations to players' minutes. But if we can't have a different result, and I just want to have really good effort, and I want to really concentrate on certain things, including scoring the ball, Shot select, but the defense has to has to be a priority for everyone on our team, and it was in Montreal, and it's not right now, and uh, that's on me as a coach. When you have four games in ten days, you can't make a lot of adjustments, and I wanted to see what some guys could do. We now have a body of work. Let's see where we go. Foster a great game Saturday, two p.m. We need the fans to come out. We need your support, and uh, that's that's about all I have. Coach, we appreciate the time, and I hope you and uh, all your coaches and players have a great Thanksgiving. You guys have a great Thanksgiving. You guys do a great job. Thanks for all you do for us over there. Anytime, sir. Appreciate it, Coach.